Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Good day. How's everyone doing? And where is everyone watching from? Going to be getting started in a couple minutes and um, today we're going to kind of be doing an intuitive sketchbook exercise a bit. Back again from Oregon. Hello British Columbia. Hello, hello. I don't know about anybody else, but for some reason, well, I, I know several reasons, but I've kind of been in my feels this week. So um, anyways, I just feel like kind of doing something where I'm just playing and painting intuitively and I don't have a ton of expectations. Hello to Texas. So what I actually think I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be recreating this kind of underwater one in a smaller sketchbook. So what you're going to need to grab today, if you would like to follow along, is sketchbook or paper. You're going to need your paints. And then I'm going to be playing with some mixed media elements. I have some of these um, metallic markers. I also have a gouache pen. I've got some acrylic paint over here. I don't know exactly what I'm going to end up using on top. And you don't have to have the exact supplies that I'm going to be using. Uh, I'm just going to demonstrate with some of them so you can kind of see them. And I highly encourage you to, you know, use what you have and play with the supplies you want to. All right, it is 11, so we're going to be getting started. For those of you who don't know, my name is Lacey, and I am the artist behind Rebel Unicorn Crafts. And every other week on TikTok, at least <laughs> for now, I guess we'll have to maybe think about switching it somewhere else. Um, we paint together and, um, yeah, so we do a lot of different things on these classes. Sometimes I teach you exactly how to paint something. Other times we do tests and then sometimes we do these little like sketchbook exercises. So this is a sketchbook exercise that I did quite a while ago, um, like fall last year that is kind of just inspired by the sea. Nothing is exact, um, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of inspired in this one by round things and then also kind of like seaweed. So there's a lot of round stuff and there's a lot of kind of squiggly stuff under the sea. And so that's kind of what we're going to be going for in this one. All right. So this is kind of the reference. Also, if anybody wants to take a screenshot, I also do have this video in, I think the sketchbook exercise playlist if you need to go back to actually see this one. But if you wanted to take a screenshot of kind of the reference we're working from, it's not gonna be exactly this. We're gonna be real free, free, free flowing on this one. Wow, <laughs> my words do not feel like they want to come today. Um, but yeah, so take a, go ahead and take a screenshot now. I'm gonna be taking it away in about, I don't know, five seconds. And today I'm going to be using my handmade colors just because I really like some of the colors in them. Um, but any any colors are going to work for this. You might want to grab some, you know, mixed media type things. Even just a normal pen might help you add some additional detail to this. All right. So I'm going to move this somewhere I can kind of see it. My desk is a bit of a mess. I'm working on a long form video um, of testing a whole bunch of different uh, masking fluids to see which one is the best, but I'm kind of in the thick of it. <laughs> All right, so here are, here's some of my handmade colors. I'm going to go ahead and give them a good spritz so they are ready to go. And the colors I'm going to be going for my first layer, we're going to be working in layers on this one, but I'm going to use a bunch of cool colors. So I'm thinking greens and blues that are going to kind of make the base of this. So I've got my colors pre-wet. I also have a brush and then I have a cup of water over here. And I'm just going to wet my brush, put lots of water in it. 
And then I'm just going to start to, I actually think I kind of want to work on it this way. So we'll kind of go across the page like this. Oh, there's a Moogie here. Moogie has joined me in the studio today because I was eating peanut butter toast right before I started this. And that is one of her favorites. I'm putting lots and lots of water in my brush. And then I'm going to swirl it around in one of the colors. I'm going to start with this really bright green color. And just start to place this down with lots of water. Even going to wash my brush out and just add lots of water because I want this to be really kind of flowy. I'm going to go over into this kind of metallic y color and I'm just kind of smushing all this together. Lots of water. We don't need this to be perfect. It doesn't need to be a perfect wash because I actually want there to be some variation. At this point, I'm adding more water. And I'm going to start to go into some different blues. This is an old blue I used to make um, that I called Unicorn Nail Polish when I mainly wore that blue color, the one that's on this finger. Um, and yeah, I'm just going to kind of put this across the page. I'm going to go across the fold on this too. And just kind of start to incorporate some of those colors. I'm going to throw a little more of that green down over here as well. I encourage you, if you're following along with this, to just kind of go with, like, if, if your heart tells you, hey, grab this green, grab that green. Or if it tells you to grab a different color, go for it. All right, I'm going to switch over to some other blues. I've got this. This is Rocket Pop Blue. This is actually one that is available on my shop. I just restocked a bunch of them. Just going into a bunch of different colors. Now this side I want to be more green and this side I want to be more blue. I do want there to be a little hint of some of that green over here, maybe with those two colors I used on the other page. But in general, I kind of want to switch over to the other color for the majority of this one, the more the blues, because I want, I want it to be a little bit different across these two so that I can place different focuses on the foreground. And now I'm just kind of pushing these all around this page. Just getting nice coverage, trying to coat, coat, coat the whole thing. Just like that. Probably should have put a page in between these pages. Oh, that's actually the last page, so it doesn't really matter because it's not actual watercolor paper, but <laughs> it probably would have been helpful to put a little block. I'm not super worried about getting anything on this one because it's a darker composition. Um, but this one, yeah. All right, this does not need to be perfect. So I'm curious to know if you're painting along, what colors did you decide to do for your background? Are you doing the same ones as me or are you gonna do something a little bit different? We need to let this dry and I will be using the heat gun in just a second. But if anybody has any questions now for kind of the background on, I do get a lot of questions on how to kind of do these free flowing backgrounds. And if you've got any specific questions, feel free to ask them now before we do dry this to move on. I'm happy I'm live too, same or close. I do tutorials like this every other week. Um, they've been on TikTok. And I know that I do have a lot of international folks that follow me too, and I, I don't know how aware you are, but the TikTok ban might be happening. Um, and I don't usually do this, but I do have Instagram and YouTube, and so um, I'm also trying to test out some other ones, but um, those are the main ones that I do have already. So. If I can't do lives like this, um, I will be doing them somewhere else. I haven't decided which one yet, but I don't I don't plan on stopping doing this. I'm I think why I'm so sad is I'm, I'm you know I I really look forward to the time we spend together in this community we have and you know the different creators on here and stuff. So <laughs> stop making me want to go buy a huge set of water. <laughs> 
hey, you could do this with acrylic. This is actually, we you know what we're doing today is more kind of intuitive. So um, if, if you've got completely different art supplies, I welcome you to follow along and just kind of follow some of the shapes and some of the theories that we're doing as far as like more free flowing colors. You don't have to do this with watercolors because I'm actually going to throw in some other stuff. Um, how much does color brand matter? It does a little bit. Um, yeah, it, it, it matters, um, but you know, use what you have. So somebody asked me to rewalk through this just in case you've just joined us. What we're doing is kind of an intuitive underwater themed sketchbook exercise. So we're gonna be working in layers. We're using, I'm using watercolor as kind of my first and second layer. Ooh, I have a bouquet down here that's dying. <laughs> um, and, but you could use whatever you want. So the way that I do these background ones is I take a really wet brush and I just grab colors. And I make sure that I constantly add more water or more really wet color as I move through. I rarely wash my brush between the colors. And I just kind of make it flow across the page. This doesn't need to be perfect. It doesn't need to look like anything specifically. I just wanted to put more of my greens with a little blue here, and then I wanted to work over here and have it be more blue and a little green. You don't have to use the same colors as me, but I do like in this one, when I look, look back on this little sketchbook exercise, one of the things I like is the difference between having the cool background, because you'll notice the background colors are all really cool, but then I bring some warmer colors into the foreground with some of the pinks and some of the purples which helps them stand out a little bit more. So I did, okay, I did download Clapper and I did post my first video. I, I'm hoping that it gets better because, um, not my video, but the, the, the algorithm over there honestly has been, um, Odd, very odd. They said that they were not going to have any dancing videos and yet almost every single video was a dancing video or angry people. <laughs> and I looked up art and there was hardly anything. I, I am gonna try, I'm gonna try it out, but um, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like as warm or inviting of a place yet, but that also might just be because there aren't very many of us there. Yeah, it, it's, I don't know, I, <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to see, I'm trying to hold, hold my judgment back from, from the app, but it, it has not been, it has not been a delightful experience thus far. <laughs> All right, so if you're following along, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually dry this. So if you're not done, that's fine. Go ahead and finish it. But I am going to dry it because the next thing I'm going to do is work on adding in some of these blobs. And I want the edges of them to be kind of crisp. And so if I added this because it's still pretty wet, the edges would all be fuzzy and I couldn't have as much control. And it will also kind of mix with the background. And I want to be able to lay on top of it. So I'm going to dry this. Now, if you have any sort of like sensitivity to noise or anything, I will be turning this on for about 30 seconds. So now is a good time to just reduce your volume for about 30 seconds and I'll count you down in three, two, and one. <laughs> dry enough. 
Yeah, I always want to make sure that <laughs> I do the noise warning because for a while I was trying to not even use that on live um, just because I feel like it's like a really jarring experience. And my goal of these sessions is for us to kind of just like chill out. And that is not necessarily super chill. <laughs> Okay, so before we move on, I want us to remember what our inspirations are. Now, you could also take this, you don't, if you're like, I don't feel like doing a seascape inspired thing, that's totally fine. What you want to do is pick a theme. Now, I am picking the underwater kind of sea type theme, and I'm going to pick shapes that occur a lot in that type of a scenario. So underwater, and if you're like in a really tropical underwater thing, you're gonna see a lot of things that are round. You know, we got jellyfish, we have sand dollars, we have anemones, we have all sorts of things. And then we also have a lot of things that are really squiggly, coral and seaweed and stuff like that. So all you really wanna do is kind of pick a couple of the main shapes that we're going to be using as the themes throughout this. So for me, I'm doing underwater, and I'm gonna do mainly circles and or blobby type shapes. They're not gonna be perfect circles and squiggles. So if you wanted to adapt that to, you know, some sort of greenery or something like that, you could do that by trying to identify the main shapes that you see within that um, to keep it kind of abstracted. So, uh, for example, like if you were doing flowers and leaves, you could do a lot of like teardrop shape things and you could do a lot of scalloped edge circles. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow along with this. So I've dried my background. It is, it is probably about 90% dry. Uh, it's not 100% dry. It's not going to matter too much. I just want it to be mostly dry. And I am using handmade watercolors here. Now, one difference between a lot of handmade watercolors and a lot of the manufactured ones is that handmade ones do tend to be a little more opaque. Um, so we're gonna be able to lay it on top and it will obscure more of the background than if we were using something different. If you don't have handmade, that's totally fine. Layering is still gonna create some really interesting things and we're gonna bring in some mixed media elements at the end that will help to separate them out more. But just in case you're like, why is yours having more coverage? That's why. Now this is where I'm going to go into more kind of uh, warmer colors and some more surprising colors, but I will also be using some of the same colors I used in the background for these, just in higher concentrations. Um, so yeah, the brands I, brand I'm using is me, because these are ones that I've made in my studio, and I do have a lot of these for sale in my shop, but not, not all of these. Um, but I am going to be using first one color that I do sell, and that is my favorite color. And that is Neon Flamingo. So I'm gonna actually grab a bunch of this and put it here. And I'm gonna make a couple blobs, just kind of where I feel like. Now I want the majority, I kind of, okay, I'm sorry. I know that I was about ready to paint, but I wanna talk about one other thing. So one of the things I like about the composition I previously did, you'll notice that the majority of what's going on is kind of centered around this motion and the majority of the interest kind of follows this line like this. And so I'm gonna do that. So most of my shapes are going to fall kind of below half line and then kind of come off and then maybe kind of wrap up around this side. So I'm just gonna start, this is all intuitive. So if your brush says here, which mine is saying here, I'm going to go here and I'm just going to go make a blob. It does not need to be perfect because nature is natural and we're painting something inspired by nature. And I think I'm going to go, I feel like a big one kind of over in this corner here would be good. We can always add more, but I'm probably going to add in three of these pink blobs at a time. One of the art rules that I do find myself following, all art rules are made to be broken, but one I do seem to follow more than other ones is the rule of um, odd numbers. So I usually try to add things in odd numbers, ones, threes, and fives. Let's add a little one over here to kind of help bring the attention up this way. Kind of trying to vary the size of these a little bit too. Okay, so I've got 
three there. I'm going to switch over to a different color. I'm going to go into that blue color. Let's go into this one. Kind of bring in, especially over on this side, some of the blue that we don't see as much here that we do see over there. And I am trying to get a higher concentration of it so it will be a little bit darker. Neon Flamingo is your favorite. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch up on the comments. Um, this is a size 12 round brush. This is one that I sell, but the um, you're just gonna wanna use for, well, for this size tutorial, I'm using a size 12, or this is, um, if you were looking at a Princeton, this is closer to a size 10. So you could also use something like that. All right, we're going dark on this one. I'm gonna need a little more of that though to really kind of spread it across. And one key when you are layering on top of other ones, other colors, one of the keys is you're gonna use a light touch. So the more that I actually, here, I'm, because I'm gonna add more on top, it's okay. But if I don't use a light touch, see how it kind of is laid on top, but if I pull it, I'm gonna be pulling up some of that. I don't know how well you can see that, but I can, I'm actually pulling a little of the background and I'm pulling some of the pigment. So rather, when you are layering on top, you kind of just want to create surface tension. And these don't need to be perfect. Nothing that we're doing today needs to be perfect. All right, I'm gonna bring another one. Let's do one over here. Again, I encourage you to listen to what your art instincts are telling you. If it is saying, hey, you need something right here. You know what? You probably need something right there. I'm gonna bring that one kind of here and I'm gonna overlap it. Um, this is still wet, so they might bleed together a little bit and that's okay because we are gonna be adding all sorts of mixed media elements. All right, now I'm gonna bring in some of that green. Somebody says, how can I avoid that? And I'm trying to figure out what What are you wanting to avoid? Um, yeah, so how much water, it, 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 that is one of the hardest things to do. So I'm gonna, by the way, I'm gonna be moving into this green color. And how, how you choose how much to add is really going to depend on kind of how you like to work. I'm gonna overlap this one here. I just feel like and these are both wet, so this is going to kind of run together, and that's totally fine with me. We're gonna get some interesting colors kind of mixing together over these two. And you know what? Having a neutral like that, because these are kind of on the opposite sides of the color wheel, having a neutral is not a bad thing in a composition. Um, but yeah, it is, I understand, it is one of the hardest things to learn and um, it does become easier, obviously, the more you do it. Starting to overlap a little bit here. I only put two of those in there, but I, I think I'm gonna add in more greens later. I kind of feel like at this point, I've got a couple that are running together, but I think I want a little more separation going forward on at least one more layer. So I'm going to let these chill out for a second while I look through the comments and then we're gonna do another round of drying and add in some more. We're also gonna come in, we'll try to do it with white um, watercolor, but we might need to do it with acrylic paint um, too to add in some additional kind of, I did it with acrylic paint on these ones just to bring some light kind of to the front. Now let's go through the comments. If anybody has any questions about what we're doing and stuff right now, now is a good time to ask because I'm going to 
stall for a second while these kind of chill out because if we do dry stuff too fast we don't get some of the fun interactions um, that doesn't have as much time to kind of like meld together so I want to wait for just a minute to do that oh I, I'm sorry I do not sh ship internationally I would eventually I would love to but it is I do not understand all of the customs and things like that to ship internationally it is really tricky <laughs> And it's just me. <laughs> All right. My next layer, I'm going to go in to, I think I'm going to put some purples and um, just kind of feel it out in a minute. Just as a recap, though, anybody who is joining us late, we're doing kind of an intuitive sketchbook exercise that is kind of inspired by the sea. So we're going to be really doing a lot of blobby type shapes and a lot of kind of squiggly type things. And we're just kind of layering and we're listening to our own art instincts that tell us you should put this there, use this color. Like if you're looking at this and you're like, man, I really wish that there was this color in here, try it. You know, worst case scenario, we can just paint over it using some other mixed media thing to kind of obscure it. This is a really good time to play and experiment. Your first thought was bubbles. Hey, bubbles are also round underwater things, so perfect. Although when they're underwater, they aren't they kind of flat? But bubbles would be a really fun one to do this with too. So uh, somebody says, I never thought about mixing acrylics with watercolor. Now I do wanna tell you a couple things while we're waiting for this to kind of chill out for a minute. Um, let's talk about the order of operations and what you can and cannot use on top of things. Um, so for example, most acrylics, with the exception of like a craft acrylic, I don't know if you've ever noticed, but craft has kind of this like chalky when it's dry that is kind of porous. And so you can technically add other media onto that, but a lot of acrylics are really glossy and you won't be able to paint watercolor on top because it's just not gonna stick to it. So if you do want to work with a mixed media element to it, watercolor is usually the base layers because you can't apply watercolor on top of a lot of other media. For example, if we put like pen, we can't really put watercolor on top, especially because it's a transparent medium, but we can work the other way. So we can add watercolor and then we can add all sorts of things. We can add acrylic, we can add gouache on top, we can add pen, we can add, um, you could technically put like some oil and stuff. I don't ever work with oil type things um, on top because oil takes too long to dry and I am an impatient painter, uh, which you'll see because I'm gonna be drying this in a second. You could also use pastels and things on top, but usually watercolor is the base layer of whatever you're gonna be doing if you want to work mixed media. Yes, colored pencil. Yes, the my, by the way, the Mightier Pencil, Natasha, she is incredible. If you want to see people being painted, and she she doesn't believe me, but she is the queen of colors, and she knows so much about all the different colors and things and brands, and I, I could watch her swatch paint and paint all day. You should definitely check out Natasha. She's amazing. All right, so I'm going to be drawing this next layer um, right now. Again, if you are sensitive to loud noises... Now is a good time to reduce your volume for about 30 seconds. I'm gonna count you down now. Three, two, and one.
<laughs> you're trying to believe me? Well, hopefully you will soon, because yeah, I I want to start a petition for a Natasha class just on different colors and things, because it is the way you talk about it is so fascinating. All right. So now I'm just going to go in. I want more bubbles. I want there to be a little more complexity to this. Um, so I'm going to come in. I think I'm going to try to add in some white paint, um, white watercolor. It's more similar to gouache. Actually, you know what we could use? Why don't we use real gouache? Let's use some real gouache. I got to find it though. For the white. Um, the embossing, so it is a heat gun, which is kind of like an embossing one. Um, I don't know, where is my white gouache? I can only find my black gouache right now, but I feel like I should. All right, apparently we're not going to use my white gouache because I cannot easily find it right now. That is the story of my life. So we're going to try it with the white watercolor. Gouache is superior for coverage, though. Also, I'm changing I'm changing my... Um, this is no longer a watercolor uh, channel. Now we are just a Mightier Pencil Stan account. Uh, just, just so you guys know. <laughs> All right. But I'm going to try to use this uh, white, white watercolor here. Now... This is a handmade, so it is going to be a little more opaque. I feel like I need something to kind of cover right here, so I'm going to kind of go for a big blob. And I'm going, to, I'm press, pressing kind of hard, so I need to be a little bit lighter because I'm starting to kind of smush that around. That actually has great coverage. Okay, I don't actually use my white very often, so... <laughs> I'm a little bit surprised by that. I guess I don't know why, because this is one that I make. All right, we're going to put another one down here. Remember, we're, we're working intuitively. Just kind of where our brains are telling us to put things. Mine is telling me to put one here. Okay. Okay. This is kind of fun, even just like this. Yeah, you should you should play, Natasha. I want to see. I want to see. I want to see you play. All right, I'm gonna go in. I think I I feel like I need some purples. I need some more blues. So I'm gonna go for that, and I might even go into some sparkly colors. Like I've got this one here that I called Cosmic Ocean. That's pretty, and I got, we got purple over there. All right. I'm not done with it yet, but I am working on my next limited edition palette, and it's going to be inspired by botanical colors. I'm close to finishing, and I've got all the petal colors. i got to work through all the greens, though. So I'm just kind of layering on top in certain areas. Let's put one... Let's put one here. Just to kind of cap it. And I've been adding things mainly in threes, just because my... Art brain tells me you can't add things at evens, but you know, all rules are made to be broken. You have a meeting with the tortoise. <laughs> all right, that one's really flowing together. I'm going to have to end up. Adding in some more. Let's go into purples. Purples. I'm just going to kind of pop these in in a couple places. I feel like I need some down here. And then 
Let's do one more up here. And this might actually be the end of where I'm going to do these bubbles. No, I think I need some more blue. Maybe? I don't know. Some of these are going to be kind of popping out from behind the other ones. I'm going to add a different blue. I'm going to change my mind about 30 times, apparently. Mm, I don't know. Some, something right in here is kind of bugging me. So let's just keep layering on top, I guess. Oh, no, this one, this one's going to be purple too. It's really going to mix together with that other color. That's fine. That's fine. It's totally fine. Every, everything's going to be okay. All right. I think, I think I'm starting to get to the point where I've got too many things going on which is going to be fine for what we're going to be doing at the end. But whenever I kind of start to feel like that, that's when I'm like, all right, pause. We can always add more stuff later with the mixed media. So we're going to let this kind of chill out for a minute before we go into adding some of the details and drying this. So feel free to kind of catch up if you are, you know, a little bit behind or ask questions now. <laughs> It's going to, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's an Andrea thing. It's going to be fine. Um, so the question is, show how I make watercolors. Uh, I, I don't have an aversion to showing, showing how to make them. Um, I guess I just feel like there are so many good examples already out there of people who are doing it, which is why I don't show it that often. Um, I've been making them for a couple years. It's pretty simple. You just need a molar and a glass thing and then your pigments. And you can start by just finding pigments like on Amazon before you like look into more serious stuff. But you have to make yourself a binder or you can buy a binder. Um, and then you literally just smush them together until they're a nice consistency. So... Um, yeah, I don't have an aversion. I just, I've got so much, so many other content ideas that I usually just don't show. Um, but if you do want to see how people make, I know Bridgette Pigments has made several videos on exactly how she makes them. And she actually even has some really interesting process videos as far as like, she will go as far as processing raw materials like rocks and things. And she shows you how she does that or how she makes different pigments from, or Joanne Green Art does it too. And they just go into so much detail about it. So I don't know. I guess I just sometimes feel like there's no point in me doing it because they're already doing it so well um, as far as teaching and showing people what they're doing. So I don't know. But I, yeah, I do really like them. And so, yeah, I've been keeping, um, there are two things that I do that I don't really share online. And it's, it's not necessarily because I don't want to share. It's also just kind of my like time where I like don't have my phone with me. So I, I belong to a pottery studio. So I make stuff there and I go and spend several hours one, a couple times a week or usually it's once a week. And I, I don't look at my phone the whole time. And then that's kind of the same thing when I'm making the colors. It's kind of my time to, like, escape, I suppose. That's okay. You know, I don't mind. I know that... Um, Actually, I've, I've noticed that for a while. The um, yeah, my name is Lacey, kind of like lace, um, but I, I don't I don't mind if you guys misspell it and things like that, especially if you're uh, international because it doesn't sound. I've seen that um, quite a few quite a bit, bunch of times. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't matter to me. It's fine. I just appreciate that you're trying. All right, so I am going to again dry this. Then we're gonna we're gonna dive into the mixed media part of this. 
Um, and we might, well, I don't know, we might add some more stuff to it after the mixed media if we want to with watercolor and the cracks and things. I don't really mind. So, um, but yeah, if you are sensitive to loud noises, again, this is a great time to turn down your volume. I'm going to count you down in three, two, and one. And when you are moving into mixed media stuff, you do want to make sure that your piece is pretty much completely dry because especially if you're using something with like a felt tip on it, the water can go in and start to affect the performance of the thing you're using on top. So make sure yours is dry. Time for the tortoise. Nice. Oh, there's another lacy. Hello. I always get so excited when I meet another Lacey in real life because it's not like it's like that uncommon of a name, but it is kind of an uncommon name. And the last time um, I somebody I, I met somebody, I was so excited. I was like, oh my God, your name's Lacey too. And she just like flipped a switch and was like, yeah, but how do you spell yours? And I was like, uh, L-A-C-E-Y. And she's like, well, I spell mine different. And I was like, okay, I just thought it was cool. <laughs> There isn't there. There was there was a there was a TikTok skit about that, like the two types of people when they find somebody else who has the same name of them, where it's like they're either really excited or it's like a competition. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be adding in details to these things. I want I encourage you to take a look at what's happening in yours. Notice that on some of these, I've decided which ones are gonna be overlapping, which ones are gonna kind of fall behind each other. So we can kind of decide that. And I'm gonna start by adding in a white gouache pen to a, some of these, just as kind of a base for a few things. And then we're gonna move into adding in some metallics and just, I don't know, we're just gonna have fun. This is intuitive. Many ways. Yeah, there are there are so many different ways to spell names, but you've, it's still a shared name. My middle name is Lee, Lacey Lee. All right, so I'm gonna start with, I'm just gonna outline some of these just to kind of figure out which ones are gonna be in front of each other. Okay, my pen is mildly cooperating. I find that I feel like white gouache pens or um, uh, white, yeah, Andrea has some that she uses and I swear I have the same brands and when she uses them, they work really well for hers and mine just do not, I don't know. I'm gonna outline this one as well. And I'm not kind of going for an exact, I'm kind of just letting my pen drag. But notice how even that little detail pops some out in front of other ones. And let's, let's make this one be kind of over here. This one's popping out in front of that one. We're just trying to create some separation, but I want this one to go behind there. 
okay? All right, before I move too far, I'm gonna start to, let's look at some of these things that I did here. So um, we can do kind of almost like flower inspired things. We can do kind of spokes, we can do squiggles. Um, so we can do sand dollar inspired things here too. I feel like this one needs to be a sand dollar. You don't have a middle name? That's that's so crazy. All right, we're gonna try to make this one into a little sand dollar. I kind of feel like maybe I should grab some acrylic paint too or something a little different but um, to kind of do the inside part. But we're gonna try it without. So I'm gonna just make some circles in the middle here. And then we're gonna make a little star There, look, and then I'm just gonna kind of squiggle around. <laughs> and we're not doing anything super duper precise. I'm also going to, you, do you guys want me to bring you in a little bit closer? I can't come too much closer, but otherwise my pen will hit this, but I can come in a little bit closer. Would you prefer that? All right, let's bring you in. If you get motion sickness, I'm gonna be moving the camera now. So look away. Okay, we're moving down, moving down. All right, I think that's about as close as I can get without constantly hitting the camera and then giving you motion sickness that way. All right, I'm gonna switch over to, um, I, I wanna do something in this one that's metallic. So I'm gonna use, this is one of these outline markers. Hopefully this one's gonna cooperate today. I really like these. Um, but I have noticed that sometimes when they sit and I haven't used these for a while. Okay, good. It's going to cooperate for now. And I'm going to intentionally kind of wiggle while I'm doing this. Okay. We've got metallic outlining that one. This one is coming in front here is what we kind of, I think I decided. Yeah. And this one, what do I want to do on this one? Oh, I think I'm going to do something that's kind of like um, sea urchin inspired esque. So they have like a little opening here. I'm going to squiggle, just not overthinking this. Let's squiggle around out here too, just to give it a little more texture. Oh, well, I guess this one is actually coming this way. We adapt. We adapt, react, adapt. And then let's make some. Okay, I like that. I like that. Oh, the close-up of the pen is this one. Also, yes, everybody give um, Monica a round of applause. She is the unofficial moderator of all my comments, and I appreciate her so much. She, she helps keep me on track and answers so many questions. So these ones are Magi outline markers. Um, there are so many different brands of these, and I, I hesitate to recommend one because when I did recommend one then when I even when I went to buy the same one it's one of those things where like there are so many Amazon listings and they just switch them out and then it was a slightly different tip um look for ones that I like the ones that have this plastic nib are actually better than the felt tip ones in my experience okay all right we've got that one added. I'm gonna grab, actually I'm gonna grab another, this is, a, this is a different metallic marker. It's not one of the outline ones. It's gonna be a little bit less. This is more like just a Sharpie. I found this, we went to Mexico a couple years ago and I found this in an airport shop. So yeah, that's where I found this one. But it, but it performs a lot like a Sharpie. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna move over to I feel like I feel like I want this metallic kind of peeking behind, so it's gonna be this part here. And then I'm just gonna kind of do some squiggles. Because I just want it to kind of hint. I guess we're gonna we'll add, we'll add a circle there too. Squiggle. Squiggle. Like that. So it's just kind of like this little peak of some subtle metallic. Oh, actually on camera that looks even more metallic than it looks in real life. That's kind of fun. Maybe this one needs it too, the one that's peeking behind over here. Remember, if you are following along, we are just doing things intuitively. All right, I'm going to mimic this one like it's got kind of like ridges or something like that. And then we're going to come in with, I feel like I want to come in, well, I'm going to try this. This is what I want to use, although it doesn't seem to be cooperating super well with me today. Um, I'm going to bring in this. And I... This overlap here is bothering me, so I'm just going to kind of try to make the border here a little bit thicker. This pin does not want to cooperate, though, today, which is super fun. I'm just going to try to clean it off. Maybe that'll help. Yeah, it helped a little bit, maybe. <laughs> I'm going to do the um, one where it kind of make like the flower shapes. So I'm just kind of making little like teardrops building on them. And if you wanted to, you could make this one super precise, but I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. Is it possible to put a layer of varnish on the drawing? Um, watercolor and varnish, you have to be really, really careful. I see a ton of people saying, oh, I just spray my watercolor paintings. I just add um, hairspray or something. And hey, if it's working for you, that is great. I have done a bunch of tests and every time it has made my stuff bleed, um, which... I, I, it's just too risky for me. Um, the only one that I ever use to seal watercolor paintings is a wax, and then you can't really add stuff on top of wax because it's going to repel it. Oh, the white pen. This is one I do have linked because um, yeah, it, it says flowers gouache pen. Well, actually, it says co-wash pen. But it... I don't know. I do have I do have a link to this on my Amazon list, I think, because it's sold under like a different name. But this is the one that, well, at least the last time I bought it, that this is what came. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move back over here. We need to add some white over here. Actually, you know what? This one is kind of a similar color as this one. So we could we could also determine like, hey, all the pink ones are the sand dollars, all the white ones are this, um, if you wanted to kind of simplify some stuff for yourself. So maybe I will make that, although that one looks more like that color, even though it is, this is technically this color, but because it's over this, it looks more like the purple. Um, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll put this one here. All right. Oh, oh, look, it's cooperating for a minute at least. So I encourage you, if you're following along on this part, to just kind of go instinctively with what shapes you feel like these things should be filled with. Or if you're really struggling, um, do a, a Google search on what are round shells or round sea plants or something like that. And that will help you kind of see, 
some of their patterns if you can't kind of just come up with your own patterns as you go. <laughs> watercolor and perfectionism. You can get real precise and real perfect with watercolor. I just, I find, um, and everybody has different preferences, but I really like, when, the art that I like to look at is a little gestural. It's it it's almost messy looking. Um, there's something that my brain kind of likes to be able to fill in those gaps. And a lot of times, like the really perfect stuff, it's fun to look at technically, but it's not something that always brings me personally a lot of joy. Um, and so I guess, I guess I'm saying that to say like imperfection can actually be really powerful in art because sometimes it is nicer for our brains to be able to kind of fill in the gaps of things. So, um, you know, your art preferences are going to be different than mine, but think about the type of art you like. And a lot of times when you actually do think about it, you're going to be like, oh, maybe mine doesn't need to be as perfect. Like even if you look at something like some of the masters, like Van Gogh and things like his art is not perfect. And that's part of what our brains seem to really like about it. You <laughs> have feel like, oh my gosh, yeah, mermaid scales in the background. If you just kind of did like scale type things, that would be really good. I'm going to add in, I feel like I'm going to do the same texture as this one up here. Just kind of outlining, and then this one, the center would be here, so I'm just going to kind of have to imagine. I probably should do bigger. <laughs> sure, we got we got some texture up there. That's fine. That's fine. Hello, Andrea. Yeah, we're just we're trying to just chill out and have fun together or at least that's my goal because yeah I was I was saying I'm I'm in my feels this week all right I want to add in some texture to this one and I think I want this one to be white so this is the pink one back here and I kind of just want I want this one to be a little looser my white pen is not cooperating but very well but you know here we are, just trying to add in. This one I literally just kind of want to scribble on a little bit. I missed you too. All right. Well, I'm gonna go, oh, I did say that my pinks were gonna be my sand dollars. I guess we need a sand dollar over here, so let's add it. Yeah, well, you just missed um, Natasha was on here, too. And then she had to go see a tortoise about a thing. At this point, I'm not entirely explaining what I'm do doing. If you have questions, I'm just kind of filling in some of these gaps and things. The last thing we're going to do once we fill all these little things in with different details is we're going to add a little bit of texture to the background, too, um, with some of those kind of squiggle type things, if, if we feel like it. Um, yeah, you can. Yeah, you absolutely can travel with watercolor stuff. Um, I often like to take my um, those watercolor markers because I like to use those with the um, a water pen. So yeah, you want water pen is key if you're gonna travel with them, but you can do all sorts of things. Sounds more exciting than your day. <laughs> all right, um, I don't know why, but I found this when I was cleaning out my studio the other day, and I feel like using this. This is a it's an ink marker, but it kind of has like a chalk 
It says it's a paint marker, but it's more like a chalk. And I, I don't know, Let's. I just feel like using it. I think I'm gonna use it on the purples. It's blue. Oh yeah, I kind of like that look. It's like matte almost. I mean, it's a little bit wet right now, but. Uh, what texture do I want for this one? I think I just want like squiggles. There. <laughs> Nothing needs to make a lot of sense. Oh, Andrea, we were quoting you earlier because I had to say it was going to be fine. And then I'm actually, I'm going to override this one here and let's just use that. And let's squiggle, squiggle, there. Kind of interesting, I suppose, kind of, kind of maybe. <laughs> if, if you filled your pen with salt water, that that is an interesting idea. Uh, this one is a is crank paint marker. I don't know, I've, this is like one of two times I've used this. I'm, I don't have a ton of experience with this one, but I found it the other day and I was like, oh, I should try that. Let's see, what else do I want to do? I feel like I'm gonna put some more of this blue on this one. And this one I think I'm gonna do like it's a circle. Oh, I like that. I like that simple, but I like it. Simple but effective. Ooh. I'm gonna add in a little more on this one. We haven't done anything to down over here. This one I'm just gonna kind of pretend like it has some lines in it. And then we really have, oh, so I only have three shapes left. Do you guys have any recommendations for these two greens or this blue one behind? What are your thoughts? What should I do? Okay. Yeah, we'll be adding in some squiggles to the background um, in a minute. Dots or spots. Oh, I like the dots idea. I think I'm gonna do, okay. Yeah, let's do this with, I'm just gonna kinda add in some. This looks like a very bad cho chocolate chip cookie. But I like, I like the spots idea. I think that it's a nice, um, that's a nice idea for kind of varying the textures. And I'm trying not to just do like, I mean, that could work too, but everything else has been pretty loose. So I'm kind of trying to like lean into that. Okay. I like, I like that suggestion. Metallic pens are expensive and they don't last. Yeah. Um, these are the best ones I have found for the outline markers. And part of that is because it's a plastic nib and then you can just use like rubbing alcohol to clean it. Somebody gave me that suggestion and it actually worked really well. Um, as far as like this type of pen, honestly, Sharpies last the longest. The Sharpie metallic ones are last the longest for me. Okay. I think this one's gonna be a Squiggle to a circle. There we go. That looks like a Pokeball, kind of. <laughs> All right, so the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna just add in um, some different kind of like seaweed-esque type things, or you could do coral things. I think I'm just gonna do seaweed just because like trying to, I'd have to look at more reference photos of coral and things like that. And right now my brain is not so. 
You know, we're just kind of doing squiggles. Just gonna do some squiggles in a couple different areas. I'm gonna bring it from down here so it looks like it's just adding in some squiggles. Remember, yours can be completely different if you want to go way more complicated or if you don't want to add this in. That's totally fine. Even that, like, that looks cute. Doesn't that look cute? Probably don't have to do anything else to this, um, but I'm gonna add in some more squiggly things with my white pen. You found some metallic ones at Dollar Tree? Huh, maybe I'll have to go explore. All right, let's just kind of squiggle. Yeah, I don't know if this is adding all that much. And also my pen is. I swear this is the pen I used on this one. Why is it? And these are the same colors. So why is the pen not? Let's try cleaning it again. Nope. All right, the pen says no. So honestly, I'm pretty happy with how this was. Um, the things I, I would recommend you taking away from a lesson like this is that there's really no right or wrong way to do most of this. Um, but, you know, the key things we did learn today were kind of about layering and how to place things on top, as well as order of operations for if you want to add in mixed media. Remember, watercolor is usually going to be the base layer of it because we can't you try to put watercolor on top of that. We don't know, I don't know all the things that are in this and a lot of those are gonna repel something like watercolor. Craft contraption, <laughs> you know, I was going through, I've been going and downloading all my older TikToks that are not on someplace like Instagram um, for safekeeping and I was like, yeah, why did I stop using my intros? They were, they were so stupid, but fun. I should, um, I should go back to those, but I don't know. All I know is that I really appreciate the, com the little arty community we have here. And um, if, if we wanna be sure, you know, to not lose each other, if you are either on U YouTube or Instagram, I am over there, which will probably be where I will transition to lives if we have to move to something completely different. Um, so you can make sure you're following me there. I did download Clapper, <laughs> which I I am pretty skeptical about, but I do have that. I don't know how much I'm gonna use it. I, I do also have a Pinterest, but I am I don't really know how to interact on Pinterest, which is, not my favorite um because I, I like the interaction so it's fun to talk to you guys and hear what you're you know want want to know about and are struggling with and things they i love helping you guys solve different problems and understand different things that's my favorite part of what i do let's see i'm gonna go through here Twitch? I've never tried Twitch. Oh, well, I feel honored that you uh, hung out today. Thanks for, for making this, you know, your first live to chill out on. <laughs> I will also, if any, if there are any other Trekkies out here, I have to tell you, one live that I get sucked into is the Star Trek guy <laughs> pretty often. He'll just be, like, opening, like the other day he was opening DS9 cards, and I was, I don't, I, I was very hooked. I wanted to see him get more Latinum series cards. <laughs> Pop Shop Live? I haven't. These are good suggestions, though. I will look at this. I will be really sad. I'm like, yeah, I'm like... I'm just... Yeah, I'm sad this week.
Yeah, we just finished up today, and so yeah, I'm gonna be, um, I'm working on a bunch of stuff. I will have more kind of beginner stuff. I've been, um, I want to get back to more things like this, uh, because I know that those of you who've been around have seen the beginner tips over and over again. Um, we will be trying, I've just been, I guess I'm kind of in a little slump, um, And then I've just been kind of, kind of sad this week. Yeah, this, but this did make me feel better was spending some time with you guys painting. You know what would really cheer me up if you did paint this? If you either um, post a video or an image on somewhere or uh, you can email it to me. Uh, if you go on Instagram, you can find my email pretty easy. I, d I do get a lot of DMs and stuff on Instagram, so I don't... It's hard for me to see all of them. Um, but yeah, if, if you did paint this today, I would love to see it. That would make me feel really nice, just seeing you guys kind of come together and paint together, and I love that so much. Struggle with imposter, oh my gosh. I did too, even like when I, <laughs> I officially became a professional artist, like I quit my job to do stuff with art. It took me like a year and a half to actually say, hi, I'm an artist. And I will just tell you this, if you do art, you are an artist. Even if you don't have any confidence in what you are doing, you are still an artist. We all have the right to call ourselves that. All right, I'm gonna go make myself some breakfast. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me today. I really appreciate your time. I hope that you had fun and I will see you guys soon. Um, I, I'm i kind of thinking, at, I will be keeping an eye on this situation and um, as we come down to the wire, I might be doing some more lives and stuff like that just to try to, like, make the most of our little community. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like a senior in high school who's like, will you guys sign my 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 yearbook? <laughs> let's, let's hang out. <laughs> so I, I'll be keeping an eye on it, and I don't know. Maybe I'll be on here some more um, coming up soon. So I hope everybody has a really good day and that you do something kind of fun today. Have a good day, and I will see you guys soon.